airside driving. There's so much more to it than just driving. Whether you operate a large international airport or a small airfield, whether your fleet includes vehicles like this or one of these. How your drivers go about their work has the potential to affect the safety of aircraft, passengers, aircrew and their colleagues, not to mention their own safety of course. Working airside presents the airside driver with a large number of hazards in what is a dynamic work area coupled with often rapidly changing environmental conditions and tight schedules to stick to. Put it all together and you have increased levels of risk. Reports from accidents and near misses involving airside vehicles have provided a better understanding of the factors that have led up to such incidents. This video is for employers of airside drivers and its purpose is to help you understand what you need to be aware of and what you need to do to ensure that your drivers operate safely airside. We're going to cover the legal and regulatory requirements, licenses and permits, safe vehicles and equipment and the human factors. We're then going to head out and look at driving airside in general and they take a closer look at driving around aircraft. It is a legal requirement under the Health and Safety at Work Act that employers should put in place safe working procedures. This is to safeguard the health, safety and welfare of employees and others who could be affected by the activities of the employer as far as is reasonable. Working out what may be reasonable is accomplished by the use of risk assessments from which control measures can be implemented to minimise risk. Your employees also have a responsibility to help you by following these procedures and reporting unsafe acts or conditions. The aviation industry also has to comply with sector-specific requirements such as the air navigation order, local bylaws and airport operation instructions. Breaches of these legal duties can result in prosecution by the relevant regulator, so they shouldn't be taken lightly. However, there are a number of resources available to assist you. For example, the Health and Safety Executive provides general guidance for managing workplace transport. Turning to the specifics of airside driving, the CAA, which is the UK's aviation regulator, has produced guidance documents on the implementation of European Aviation Safety Agency regulations and requirements for safe airside driving operations. Central to CAP 790 is an airside driving permit scheme, or ADP. This is essentially about driver licensing and training. Each driver will need to hold an ADP for the area in which they'll be operating. As part of the ADP, you'll also need to check that each driver holds a full UK driving license for the category of vehicles they will drive. In the case of specialist vehicles, there may not be a category, so you'll need to assess them and issue a certificate of competency for that vehicle. Drivers also need to be assessed as medically fit and reassessed periodically. CAP 790 sets out the guidelines, but each employer will have to develop and implement their own scheme to suit their operation. Typically, there are two types of ADP, airside, road and apron, an A ADP, and manoeuvring areas, an M ADP. Sometimes this will include the runway, or there may be a third type for manoeuvring areas and runway, an R ADP. Manoeuvring areas should be clearly marked by solid white lines and are areas with additional hazards, hence the need for a specific ADP. Drivers must have an M ADP to enter them 
and direct permission from air traffic control. They must also maintain contact with air traffic control at all times when they are in the manoeuvring and runway areas. A valid airside vehicle permit may also be needed for each vehicle. Vehicles operating airside must be of MOT standard, be maintained in good condition and be regularly inspected. Your maintenance and inspection program will ensure that your vehicles are not only safe to operate, but that they also comply with the airside vehicle permit scheme. Drivers should also carry out their own daily vehicle inspections. Training needs to establish the requirement and content of those inspections as well as which faults can be rectified by the driver and which should be reported. It stands to reason that using equipment incorrectly or when in a poorly maintained condition has to increase risk. These rules also apply to towed equipment such as aircraft steps, ground power units and trailers. Don't forget obstruction lights are also required in operational areas. These will need to be regularly checked as well along with other onboard equipment, such as radios. The human element is also crucially important in airside driving. Drivers must be trained in the tasks that they'll be carrying out. That includes familiarity of both the vehicles and equipment they'll be using, and the necessary procedures for those tasks. That's also a requirement of the ADP. It won't surprise you to learn that often accidents are caused by drivers who are not adequately trained in the tasks that they were undertaking. For some tasks, driving skills are only part of the requirement. To operate radio equipment, drivers must have the necessary communications training and if English is not their first language, you should provide additional training to ensure that language and accents do not become a barrier to communication at a critical moment. General health and well-being can also have an effect on a driver's ability to drive safely airside. This is true whether they have a medical condition and are receiving treatment or if it is just that they are suffering from the latest bout of colds or flu. Drivers must be able to judge whether they are fit to drive and make the correct decision on whether to get behind the wheel or not. However, it is down to you as the employer to make sure that your management style is supportive. Drivers must be confident that they can go to their line manager when they are unwell and be listened to. Excessive tiredness can also create a safety issue for drivers. Again, it is necessary to be supportive, as it could well be that the problem is a consequence of unsustainable work patterns driven by operational time pressures. Regular training and assessment of driving and communication skills is a necessary part of the ADP system. Supportive management will also make sure that drivers know that they will not be expected to drive when they do not feel that they can do so safely. OK, we've looked at the core elements of the airside driving permit. Let's now look at the typical hazards drivers face and the procedures they should follow to minimise the risks. I can't emphasise enough how important it is that your drivers are familiar with the layout of the airfield. And that's not just in daylight. It will look totally different to your drivers at night with airfield lights and vehicle and aircraft movement. Driving in extreme weather conditions or when airfield weather safeguarding is in force will also be different. Make sure that they take the time to learn their way around in all conditions, day and night, and keep them up to date. This knowledge will also be crucial when they encounter other people who may not be familiar with the airside environment, such as contractors or passengers. 
As part of this familiarisation process, they should also get to know the restricted areas that they shouldn't drive into, such as instrument landing system critical areas, holding points and stop bars. There will also be areas where vehicle movement and parking is prohibited, such as around fueling vehicles, emergency exits and interstand clearways. Driving around moving and stationary aircraft not only poses a threat to the driver's own safety and that of other airside staff, but potentially to passengers and aircrew on board aircraft. Air Navigation Order CAP 393, which covers aviation law, makes clear that airside drivers must not endanger any aircraft, either recklessly or negligently. If they do so, they could be liable for up to five years imprisonment, a substantial fine or both. The airside driver's video goes into some detail about the key hazards and the procedures to be followed to reduce the risks. In the implementation of your ADP scheme, you need to examine and risk assess these points. What is applicable to your airfield should be included in your driver's training, as directed by CAP 790. A key element of driver training will be emergency airside procedure and incident reporting. Drivers must know what to do and who to contact in an emergency. It should also embrace the CAA Just Culture, which encourages the open reporting of accidents and incidents. How your management team responds to incident reporting will be crucial in developing such a culture, where potential accidents are prevented because everyone is prepared to play their part. Airside is a dynamic environment. It's fast moving and constantly changing. It isn't possible for drivers to anticipate everything that they'll come across when driving airside, but with an ADP scheme in place, they will be better prepared to avoid potential incidents and stay safe. Here's a brief summary of what we've covered in this video. It is a legal requirement that you should put in place safe working procedures. Your employees have a responsibility to follow these procedures. Make sure you follow CAA guidance for the safe operation of airside driving. Before driving airside, drivers must hold the necessary licences and permits. They will need a full UK driving licence or a certificate of competency for the vehicle being operated. The CAA sets out the guidelines but you will need to develop your own scheme to suit your operation. Typically, there are three types of permit. Airside road and apron, A. Manoeuvring areas, M. Manoeuvring areas and runway, R. Vehicles operating airside must be of an MOT standard. Your maintenance and inspection program should ensure that vehicles are safe to operate and comply with the airside vehicle permit scheme. Drivers should inspect vehicles and equipment before they start using it. Drivers must be trained in the tasks they will carry out and be familiar with the vehicles and equipment they will be using. Training and assessment of driving and communication skills is a necessary part of the ADP system. Make your management style supportive. Drivers must feel that their concerns will be listened to. Drivers must familiarise themselves with the layout of the airfield. It would look totally different to them at night. Make sure drivers are aware of the areas where vehicle movement and parking is prohibited. Driving around moving and stationary aircraft poses a threat not only to your own driver's safety but to that of other airside staff and passengers. A driver must never endanger any aircraft either recklessly or negligently. 
In the implementation of your ADP scheme, you must risk assess any task your drivers undertake. Drivers must know what to do and who to contact in an emergency. It is vital that drivers report any incident or accident. The CAA has developed Just Culture. It is important that you encourage your drivers to play their part and always report. Further information on the documents referred to in the video can be obtained from the CAA website. Thank you for watching. Thank you.